Hello everybody! Today I thought I would show you a very interesting simulator that I found quite some while ago. This right here is a SAM simulator. It's uh, designed and implemented by a single guy from Hungary who designed it with the purpose of letting you experience the control panel and everything for a Russian or other national operating one of these old Cold War systems by placing you behind the controls of one. That being said, it's high time to proceed into the simulator itself and have a look. So, this daunting contraption right here is the control panel for the subsystems and the master mode of the uh, simulator, well, the system itself. We have the elevation and azimuth display for the target tracking radar, which is a, uh, a machine designed, well, to track the airplanes really, while there's another radar responsible for locating them. Proceeding on, we have the fire control officers panel, which shows missile readiness uh, controls, the fire buttons, the uh, target tracking computer output, the uh, altitude of the target plane, and some other information about the missile status, the status of the semi-active seeker heads, etc. etc. We have the target finding officers uh, section, which um, houses some displays from the target uh, tracking radar, also named the square pair. It's these two things here that show Doppler return and uh, also uh, general information about a sector search and whatnot. We'll get to it. This is the display from the target finding radar, the Tall King B, which is quite a nice name for a radar, I think. Finally, we have the target tracking officer station with an ammeter for the range and a display for the velocity of the uh, incoming target. As it is a Doppler radar, it actually does require you to track the target in velocity as well as uh, all of the other areas. And these buttons are related to range finding and the tracking modes that will be applied. All of that being said, Time to start the machine up. We switch it to the startup mode. We turn on the power to the square pair target illumination radar. We turn on power to the cabin. We turn on the power supply to the square pair. And we turn on the high voltage. Then we switch to the run status. And the system is now ready for operation. As we know for a fact, we'll be firing today. We're switching it to the ready to fire mode. We're also going to request that all of our missiles be ready. The gyroscopes should be spun up and the GSN seeker heads should be started. We'll see them come online now. Right here we have the signals from the seeker heads and the flashing light indicates that the gyroscopes are spinning up. All of that in mind, let's have a look at the talking bee and see if we have anything on the scope. Let's bring in the range a little bit closer just so that we're ready for anything that might appear. And you can see the traditional radar sweep, just scanning the general area. We'll be expecting targets within this range as we are on the practice grounds, and there we have a blip. So what we'll do is we'll turn the square pair towards the target. We'll see that the range is approximately 75 kilometers, so we'll we'll turn the range switch down there as well, and we'll see the range gates now on scope. 
finally from the IAD we see that the target is at 135 hectometers, so 13.5 kilometers. That note, we'll, um, we'll set that as the target altitude by changing the elevation of the square pair and taking a reading of this meter right here. Looks about right. So we turn on the radar to the default mode, which is monochromatic emission, and boom, presto, we have we have a target straight away. Well, we had one. Let's try that again. Do a conical search. Yeah, he is in the upper. Come on now. There we go. So we go to the target tracking officer and we adjust the velocity and set it to AS3 tracking. So now it's locked in elevation and azimuth, but we still need to find the exact range. For this we'll use half face code manipulation or modulation in rough nonius mode, which allows the computer to calculate the range to a precision of about 15 kilometers. Then go into medium nonius, which is about 9 kilometers, followed to fine, which is about 2 kilometers, and finally to 55 kilohertz, which gives us about 90 meters. We'll track in range, go into full face code modulation, turn on the ASPMU, which is the target tracking computer, and we now have a full lock and we're ready to fire. So, let's tell everyone we're firing by pressing the Jebota or Jeboga button. I don't know, it's Russian, it's hard to read. Prepare launch safety, fire. And we have a missile away. Here we can see the predicted impact point and the target and us. This is signals received back from the missile status reporting unit. If we see a spike here it means that the missile has missed and is uh, reporting back to us. But for now it looks promising. The Doppler return of the target has minimized significantly. The speed is reducing and we see that the altitude is very slowly dropping. All in all, per definition, a good hit. So, we'll drop the target, reset the system back to the default state, we'll change the range back up a bit to expect a more distant target, and we'll continue monitoring the talking bee. We are also going to change the elevation by pressing this, the Vosvrat button, which cancels the elevation changes we've made. So here we have something that's about 50 kilometers out. I'd say we'd want to reduce the range a little bit on that. And the altitude according to the air defense system, is 10 kilometers. So we'll raise the square pair a little bit, just to get to that 10 kilometer sweet spot, and then do a conical scan. Eleven kilometers now. You can also do a sector scan, but it's very close now. So the question is, perhaps we should acquire it through the air defense system instead. We cancel the sector scan and we use the data provided to us by the air defense. 
we start tracking it ourselves. Again, try and find the range. Oh dear, it's extremely close. So... We are gonna have a hard time with this one. So, for left KM, ASP MU, and back to monochromatic emission. And we fire. Hopefully we can still hit it. We'll see here if we didn't. Oh, we did. Good hit. Good hit. Doppler return is reducing. We... Uh... Yep. Speed is dropping. We can unlock. This two targets hit. Good hits. On that note, I hope you've enjoyed this very brief demonstration of a highly complex simulator where it's not always so easy to uh, tell what's going on at a glance. That being said, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and leave a comment below. I read everything and I always enjoy getting feedback because at the end of the day I am still a rookie, I'm still learning and any information or feedback you have to give me is warmly appreciated. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a tremendous day.